So, uh, my sense right now is that our job at Google is to express the importance of openness in the network service provision so that innovators have full access to the Internet's resources and its users. But we are not saying, oh, you shouldn't charge more for higher speed access. We never said that. Uh, we never said every packet has to be treated exactly the same because we recognize that maybe if you're playing gaming systems, you need to have low latency. Or if you're doing uh, audio conferencing or video conferencing, low latency is important. So we're not saying that there shouldn't be those features. We're just saying no one should be able to take advantage of providing the broadband service to interfere with competitors offering parallel service. Do you think that's resolved in the next 10 years? You wouldn't have well, it? I hope so, but it's not resolved in the United States. It has been resolved in, uh, in the Netherlands. It's been resolved in England. It's been resolved in uh, New Zealand. Uh, and in other places where there are strong regulatory agencies, it's been resolved there too, so uh, Japan has told NTT you have to offer broadband wholesale service, period. And they do. That's good for all of us. That's good for everybody, and so I hope that we're able to continue along with that. Dr. Vincent, I know you're, you're um, involved with the upgrade to IPv6, and we are running out of IPv4 uh, block address spaces already. What's, what's the update on the, the, when's the imperative to upgrade to IPv6? Five years ago, there really wasn't any deployment by IPv6 except an experimental net. Now it's a different story. We're really seeing serious uh, IPv6 efforts. Google is already offering an IPv6 search service. If you go to ipv6.google.com, you'll get our IPv6 access to the search engine. Um, we'd like to uh, make that capability uh, work for all of our products and services, but it's going to take us time to do that. We're going to run out, we the general internet users, of uh, I, um, unique IPv4 address space, probably around 2011. And so for us, that provides big motivation to make sure we have both v 4 and v 6 running at the same time together in our uh, underlying systems. We're confident we can do that. So I think, here it is, 2008, we should be starting to get ready for IPv6 service on all of our products and services, and, and that's what we're doing. Um, because I don't want to be caught in the year 2011 not being able to service somebody because they were forced to have a V6 only address because there weren't any more V4 addresses and they couldn't get to us. Video content now is flooding the internet. Uh, can you give us some idea about whether we'll be undergoing a lot of brownouts and blackouts because of the blockages as a result of video applications on the internet? Well, let's see. First of all, uh, you can never have too much capacity. Okay. Right? So you know, we all understand that. I, I think that, uh, that two things are worth observing. The first one is that not all of the video that is being put on the internet needs to be delivered in real time. You, in fact, you could deliver it faster than real time if you had high enough speed circuits. Mm -hmm. But you could also deliver it slower than real time, and nobody cares because it's running in the background. So I'm absolutely persuaded that we don't need to have real-time video delivery for all video, maybe 15% of it. But the other 85% is pre-recorded material. And we can just download that at any speed that we want to and then play it back, of course, at full speed. So I'm actually excited about video on the net, and I'm not worried that we're going to run out of capacity. Why doesn't Google allow you to download your videos? Actually, we've been talking about that. Um, the, as I understand it, some of the early debates and discussions in Google Video were with the holders of material that, was in, that had intellectual property rights associated with it. And so the terms and conditions for our delivery of their material uh, included prohibition uh, against download. But not all the video material on the net has that problem. And YouTube, in most, for the most part, doesn't either. And so I've been urging, and I think eventually we'll get this sorted out so that people can do downloads as well as just watch it streaming results. That's easier on the network, because when you do a download, you don't care if a packet gets lost or it gets retransmitted or what have you. Eventually it's a file, and you just record the file, and when it's finally time to play it, you start playing it, and it gets interpreted. So I'm, um, and I am a strong proponent of being able to download this material. So you, you foresee a time when YouTube and uh, Google Video will just offer you the word download right next to the video? Well, uh, since YouTube 
hasn't announced that capability yet. I'm in no position to announce it either. <laughs> uh, and we don't usually announce things that we're not ready to, uh, to uh, share. But I am a proponent of that, of, of, of that kind of thing. And I recognize that there are going to have to be constraints for material that does have intellectual property rights associated with it. But for those things that people are willing to make available that way, uh, it seems to me a very natural thing to do. Dr. Vincent, can you just tell us a little bit about the Interplanetary Internet Project and how it's doing? Uh, the Interplanetary Internet, to choose uh, some of my time, uh, I'm also very interested in um, providing internet access in places where there is no power grid and there is no uh, uh, hardwired uh, uh, fiber or cable. So this translates into satellite access and a uh, solar powered uh, set of workstations. So I've been funding, uh, out of you know, personal funds, uh, some uh, internet, uh, uh, what do you call them, I guess, really, these are internet cafes that are operated using photovoltaic uh, power converters and satellite based access. And so the first what one, uh, we put one into Nigeria a few months ago. Uh, one of them is being shipped to Tunisia, and the third one is going to go into the Philippines, and perhaps the fourth one in Benin. Yeah. So at some point, I, I can't afford to do this forever, but uh, I at least wanted to demonstrate that it's possible to run something off the power grid and still get onto the internet and provide useful service. And this company that is called? No, this is not a company. This is just a personal project of mine. Oh, I see. And, and is the service uh, for children or for school children? It's for, or any, or well, it's for anybody. It's, yeah. it's an internet cafe. And so the first one went into a university environment. Okay. And that's because the university people are the ones most likely to know how to use it and how to operate it. Because I'm not operating these things. I'm just providing the capital to go build them. And the recipient has to run them. The idea is to turn this into an economic engine that lets them uh, essentially pay for the operating cost. So it's an experiment to see whether it's possible to do that. And, and if it's sustainable, that might be a, a business model for someone. Does Google have any projects uh, of that you are involved in that is somehow connected to like, the OLPC, where you're actually providing uh, internet access? Or um, I'm, I'm uh, not a direct participant in the OLPC. There are other people who, who participate in the design. So uh, Google, as you know, has put some uh, time and energy into OLPC. Uh, we're big believers that uh, the more we uh, can drive cost out of access to the internet, the larger the population of people who can afford to be online. And so uh, we're big fans of that. Uh, Google.org is also working very hard on ideas for helping to fund uh, entrepreneurs, especially kind of the small and medium-sized businesses. That they, they already had seed capital, but they need another round of financing, and they're not finding it because they're in places where the only money that's available comes from the banking industry, and they're very conservative. So uh, Google.org, run by Larry Brilliant, has some very, very innovative ideas about providing for uh, venture capital for small to medium-sized businesses. That can have a really big impact on the local GDP. And we think that that's an important contribution. Do you think Microsoft should buy Yahoo? <laughs> I don't know that I could give advice to the government. I'm just, a bit, uh, I'm just an engineer, right? So I don't know what business advice that they would they want from me. Um, but I understand that the motivation is, uh, is to be in the online advertising business. And I can't blame them for that because it's a very good business. We've discovered that. And we're very happy with it. And we also believe in competition. So we'd like to see uh, Yahoo survive. Just one last question. Obama or McCain? Wow. <laughs> well, I'm not sure yet whether we've reached the point where, where it's just those two that are a choice. I think uh, Hillary Clinton is still very much in the race. Um, I'm not uh, in the habit of endorsing uh, various candidates. But if you go online and you Google BitSurf and uh, the American elections, you'll probably find out where I put free money. <laughs> 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 okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.